Time's come to take the DNA Center and the Identity Service Engine and integrate them so that they can work together. If you're interested in that, stick with me because we're going to start that right now. To make this happen, we're going to access the DNA Center using the credentials. I'm next going to, from the main dashboard, navigate to System Settings. Under System Settings, I'm going to scroll down and we'll note that we have no Identity Server integrated with the platform. I'm going to hit Configure. Inside of the Authentication and Policy Server section of the Settings tab, I'm going to add a new resource. That resource is going to be located at 100.64.0.201, and we'll use a shared secret of ICE is cool. And I'm going to tell the system that it is an Identity Services engine and tell it how to log in using admin. ICE is cool, and I must specify an FQDN, a fully qualified domain name, and that's going to be ice1.micronicslab.com. I'm going to give it a subscriber name of SD Geeks, and I'm going to hit the View Advanced Settings, and I'm going to enable TACAX. This should be sufficient to allow the DNA Center to integrate with the Identity Services engine. But while this process is taking place, let's talk a little bit about what's going on. The DNA Center is logging into the Identity Services engine, and it is going to register itself, and we are going to form a relationship using PXGrid and Extensible Messaging Presence Protocol to exchange information between the two resources. Once this has been accomplished, what will end up happening is we'll be able to leverage the power and the capability of SGTs, 802.1x, and other functionalities that are baked into the Identity Services engine. However, it's kind of misleading based on what's going to happen here. When I look at the user console from the pers perspective of the DNA Center, we're going to see two green check marks under the system settings user interface that's going to tell me that everything is going to be working the way I want it to. However, when we look at it from the perspective of the Identity Services Engine, we're going to see one of these client installation states as showing up as pending. So what we're going to do is we're going to need to address that, and we will simply take care of it. And then once this is done, this device is going to be ready and functioning the way we need it to function. We see that the state is in progress. I'm going to click Refresh, and it should change to Active. Now, here's what I was describing. If we go back to the System Settings window and scroll back down to those external servers, what we'll see is, is we actually have two listings with green check marks. However, this is not the case. We have two platforms that are built into the DNA Center. We have Automation and we have Assurance. The Assurance, a.k.a. the NDP, the Network Data Platform, is going to be, need to register with the Identity Services Engine as well as the NCP, the Network Control Platform. And the Network Control Platform is going to handle all of our automation processes and resources. And we need to make certain that these have actually taken place the way that we want them to take place in order for this to function. And the only way that we can validate that is by going to the Identity Services Engine and in the context of the Identity Service Engine, I want to see two new clients showing us registered. I'm going to hit refresh, and we will see here that we have one for SD Geeks, and we have one for SD Geeks underscore DNAC underscore NDP, the network data platform, the network data platform being Assurance. And what we see here is, is notice that the one that is recorded for NDP is showing up as pending. So we're not done yet. We need to remedy this. We need to make certain that this is going to move from the idea of pending to it will move to either online or offline. So let's watch this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this one. I'm going to go to total pending approval, and I'm going to say approve all, and it should transition from the pending state to an operable state, which will be 
online. Now, in later versions of ICE, you may see this stay offline. Don't panic. But in version 1317, which is the version that is running inside of the Enterprise Infrastructure Lab exam, we are going to need to recognize the fact that this should say online. So at this particular juncture, what we've done is we've done everything that we set out to do. We've integrated the Identity Services Engine with the DNA Center. The DNA Center should now be able to communicate with the Identity Service Engine using Platform Exchange Grid, and it should have the capability of being able to learn about all of the functional components that have been configured inside of the Identity Service Engine. So if I go to my work center and I go to Trust Set Components and we take a look at what's going on here, I see I have a security group section, and these are my individual SGTs. Now, what we want to do is we want to make certain that these resources are going to be communicated to the DNA Center. So to do that, I'm going to go to the DNA Center, and I'm going to move to the provision section. I'm sorry. I want to move to the policy section. And under the policy section, we're going to see here that this is going to be the communication that's going to take place between the Identity Services Engine and the DNA Center. I'm going to start that process by clicking Start Migration. And as a result of this, this process will mean that I'm going to query the Identity Services Engine, and I'm going to learn about those SGTs. And what we're going to do is we're going to synchronize our databases between the two platforms using PX Grid. We can see now that these resources are indeed synchronized. As a validation, as a test, what I'm going to do is I am going to create an SGT. I'm going to go to my group-based access control, hit the down arrow. I'm going to create a scalable group, and I'm going to call that scalable group teachers. And I'm just going to go ahead and leave it in the virtual network of default underscore VN or just default underscore virtual network. Now, if I go to the Identity Services Engine and we take a look at all of these values, you'll notice that I do not see a single entry in here for teachers. Let's go ahead and say save, and it should create that scalable group. As a result of creating that scalable group, it should now show up in my listing, in my system. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and change this. I'm going to say show 50 entries. And we see that I have teachers. We can see that it was given a tag value of 0 by 12 or a decimal value of 18. Remember, 0 by always indicates the numbers that are going to follow the little x are going to end up being hexadecimal in nature. Let's take a look at the Identity Services Engine, and we will go ahead and <clears throat> we want to see if we see a new field here and I'm not seeing teachers but let's not fret what we're going to end up doing is let's go ahead and just refresh so I'm going to click off of it and then I'll click back onto it and we can see that we do indeed see the scalable group of teachers now when the time comes we'll talk about this and we'll utilize this but right now with everything as is this is a completely functional integration. The Identity Services Engine, the DNAC are communicating with each other. We've demonstrated that I can create a scalable group tag inside of the data, the DNA Center, and I have verified that that scalable group tag is now visible in the Identity Services Engine. So we've accomplished everything that we set out to accomplish, which means this video is done. In the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to leverage the DNA Center for the purposes of discovering resources that are going to be under its control. We are going to find a device. We'll use a virtual device to implement this. And then later, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we would do this with physical devices that we can connect to our server. So in the next video, let's go ahead and see if we can't start the idea of creating a software-defined access fabric. I'll see you guys there.